Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. That means it's time for another uh, live stream. Today is Thursday, June 15th, 2023. I wasn't sure what day it was. Um, I had to think about it, though, because I put the garbage cans out today. That means it's a Thursday, at least for most days. That means it's Thursday. Um, so I went with Thursday, and I did write June 15th on the top of the screen, like over here, for myself to see, at least on the interface that I see. So I hope that's right. Sometimes I've done that before. Where I'm like, I wrote down the name of the date uh, and the 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 name the day and the date, and I still get it wrong. But today, I think I got it right. And you know, today's one of those days where I definitely could have gotten it wrong because it's just been a flurry of activity today. Everything is kind of off balance a little bit. Uh, with the kids being out of school and stuff, there is some summer camp kind of stuff going on. Just had my family, my in-laws were here, and my nephew, my godson was here as well for the early half of the week. So there's just a lot of stuff happening. But, you know, things are finally settling in. I think by the time I get to the weekend, maybe I'll be back to, to normal. So that'll be okay. How, how are you guys doing today? Let's have everyone listen in on the podcast on the audio-only version. You guys got a bonus uh, last night bonus episode the interview that i did with sydney gidabude uh went out audio first on the podcast last night and then that went live on the kapuzi run club channel as a standalone video this morning so hopefully you guys enjoyed that and hopefully you guys are out there enjoying your run and for those of you guys who are watching this on youtube so the video version but not live and you're watching it later welcome to the number one running live stream that you can listen to while you're trying to figure out what is today's date? Is that guy right? Is he right about it being June 15th? I'm not really sure. You know what? The other thing that I got to do is I got to find, I got to make a better list of things that this podcast, that this live stream is number one at. Is it the number one live stream to crowdsource running shoe recommendations? Let's go with that. Let's try that again. Welcome to everyone watching the YouTube later, but not live. You are listening to and watching the number one running live stream to listen to on YouTube for crowdsourcing running shoe recommendations. I like the sound of that one. Let's go with that. All right. Let's see what we got in the chat. Uh, speaking of people that won't catch it live, Sam Barkley says, yo, what's going on? I won't catch this one live. I'm just about to go for a run with my dad. Oh, how nice. But I'll be listening when I'm back home and stuffing my face with curry. That sounds really nice. You know, I don't think that there's enough curry in my diet. I wish I had more. I wish I knew how to like make a, like whip up a good one, you know, but I just don't. Martha's here. She says, thanks to everyone for the birthday shout outs yesterday. She can only be here a little bit because she's meeting friends in about 10 minutes. But yesterday's was funny AF. KRC is brilliantly clever. Well, thank you so much. I, I had a good time with that one yesterday. I feel like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. If anyone that listens on the podcast, like the audio only version, you'll have to let me know how that one was. Because I feel like that one was just me giggling the whole time because I was having a lot of fun with Tommy. And with you guys in the chat. So hopefully you guys still enjoyed it, even if you had the audio-only version. All right. Eliza says, Hi, Kofan. Please let this unboxing be another secret non-elite shirt thing, the long sleeve. I don't think that's what it's going to be. Today, we got a package. It's from Path Projects. We'll get to it in a minute, but here's a package from Path Projects. I will tell you that we are working on stuff. This is not the stuff that we're working on. This is some other stuff. You guys have probably seen it. Um, but we'll, I, if it's what I think it is, I'm not sure. Cause I haven't opened it yet, but we'll see. We'll get to it in a minute. Um, uh, Sean Devlin said he had an easy six today in the Nova last three. He says, is it time to retire them at 300 miles? I think that that shoe could probably go a little bit longer than that is, would be my guess. I haven't taken them that far, but, um, I also feel like 300 miles is not a wrong answer either. So I think, you know, with people's mileage potentially varying. I think anywhere between like 275 and 350 is where you'd be able to go with a Nova Blast. I think it depends on how hot of a surface you're running on. Like if you did a lot of summer running in them, that's going to wear down the rubber a little bit faster. So, you know, that may have an impact. Daniel Burton says he did some easy pickups, rest tomorrow, and he's got race on Saturday for the 5K. Nice, nice. I've been doing some... Um, 5K, 10K work myself, getting ready for Peachtree. It's coming up 4th of July weekend. Um, I'll be down there. I'll have more information, but if you're going to be in the area, even if you're not running Peachtree, that weekend we will be doing a shakeout run. Drew and I will be there. 
Um, it'll be hosted with Adidas in one of the running stores. I can't remember which one. Um, it's not that I can't. I just don't currently remember which one. So that'll be happening over the weekend at some point. So if you're around and want to get together for a run, I'd love to see you guys. We will be doing a live stream as well. I don't know if that's going to be like open to the public, like at the running store that we're doing it at, or if it's going to be just kind of like, I'll have a guest and we'll be talking live. I'm not sure, but we'll also have like a weekend live stream as well for the 4th of July. Um, but I've been doing some 400 meter repeats. Well, they're not exactly 400 meter repeats. I don't, I have not been able to get onto a track around here. There's a lot of high schools in the area, but the one that would like my kids would eventually go to that one has always been locked every time I go in and I don't feel like climbing fences right now. There is a track at my daughter's school, but it's a 200 meter track and I don't want to really hurt my ankles on that thing. So I've been just doing 400 meter repeats by figuring out like, you know, about how long should it take me to do the 400 meters and then um, setting an interval for that amount of seconds. So that's kind of what I've been doing. So that's been my work to get ready. I'll, it's a 10K race, so I'll have to do some threshold work. And it's a hilly race, so I'll have to do some hill work too. feels like a lot of work that I need to do between now and 4th of July, and I'm not going to be able to get enough in, but it won't be an A race for me, but it'll be fun. I did run today in the... Let's see, where did I put them? Oh, the Adios 8. I, I was thinking going into this, today's workout, that um, running in the Adios 8, I would end up thinking... Like, what's the point of this shoe anymore? I felt like it would be, feel really similar to the Takumi Sen 9. It does not feel very similar to, to the Takumi Sen 9. Um, this shoe made me work for it. It makes you work hard because there's no um, plate. There's no carbon or energy rods. There's these like little pink stabilizer things. But those are not like, those are not like the uh, energy rods in the Takumi Sen. So like, um, you get a lot of feedback from the shoe. It lets you know when your foot strike is clean and when it's not, and, and it is very kind of twitchy. There's no cruise control on this shoe. So it was it was tough to run in, but I also feel like, oh, if you're running like 5K or shorter, that's a pretty good workout shoe for you. I don't know if that's what I would race in, but it's a pretty narrow use case in my opinion. But it's weird how different the Adios has changed so far. At least that's, my thoughts on the first run. I'll take it for a couple more runs before I finalize that, but that's how my run was today. Uh, Frank says, why don't you just have the watch workout set to 0.25 miles? Because 0.25 miles is a little bit longer than a 400 meters by a little bit. Um, and also, like, um, I'm worried that like GPS interferences can happen. So I like just going by time. So for my mile repeats too, I do, and I don't really even do mile repeats. I do six minute intervals for mile repeats. So like, that's kind of how I do it. I just do it by time rather than, than distance. Because that's ultimately what you're trying to figure out in my mind is like, you want to be able to work a certain amount of time. So I think the paces that I've been running, I think I've actually been running a little bit more than 400 meters. So I feel like that's okay. I don't know, maybe that's wrong. Daniel Burton wants to know how much is the Adios 8 weigh? I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head how much it weighs, but it is really light. I mean, the upper see-through. Um, I feel like I'm going to use this shoe as an example when I do... Um, I don't know. You can't see it right that well here. Oh, yeah. You can't see my fingers moving in there. Um, when I talk about like how much room a shoe should have at the front, because like I wore really bright colored socks today, and you could see like definitely where my toes ended. Uh, so I thought it was fun, but you know, you got Takumi Sen 9 and the Adios 8. They look very similar, but um, they feel very different. There's also a five millimeters difference in stack height in these. I, You know what I really love? I love that Adidas is stamping on the side of the shoe what the, the stack height is. It's very helpful. <laughs> 33 millimeters in the back for the Takumi Sen 9 and 28 millimeters for the Adios 8, but it's very, very light. Mm. Sue Ann said, I just did 400 meter intervals on Tuesday, starting my Chicago training block. Whew. It feels like Chicago's so far away. It feels like it's way too early, but I suppose it's not. 
All right, we got running shoe Q and A. Let's hit the button. All right, Matt Byer with the running shoe Q&A. He says, Co, I saw on Strava you were the Adios 8 for the first run. What are your initial thoughts? And is it a good replacement for the Takumi Zen 8 9 after I retire them? Um, I think I got this to this question too late since we were already talking about it. But um, yeah, I have initial thoughts. I feel like it feels like a true racing flat to me. Like it reminds me of like the Nike Zoom Streak, like five, you know, that Phylon midsole with a TPU shank. Um, it's not as snappy as a zoom streak, but the foam is a little bit nicer. Um, but it kind of makes everything feel a little bit like you're running on a track, but you're not getting a lot back from the shoe. So it's like, mm, if like a daily trainer is driving in a regular car and then right, dri like driving like a, like a Porsche or a sports car is like running in a carbon plated shoe driving in a car, turning traction control off is like running in the Adios 8. I just feel like I it, it, I had to think a lot when I was doing my intervals because I just feel like it's really, there's no there's no like set it and forget it with the shoe, which I feel like if you're a skilled racer, that's something that's going to be really nice for you. For me, uh, it's it was a skill that I had to work on. So that, it's a little bit different. I don't think it's a good replacement for the Takumi Sen 8 or 9. If your Takumi Sen 9 is done, I would say at the moment, get another Takumi Sen 9. There's not a lot of other shoes that are like that one. So those are those are a lot of thoughts so far. I didn't think I would have so many thoughts after one run. You know, Here's another running shoe question from Vittorio Vitale. It says, hey, Ko, I'd like to add a shoe to my rotation, which consists of the Invincible for Easy Days and the Endorphins Pro 3 for workouts and long runs. What would you recommend? Um, hmm. I mean, where do you want to go with that one? Because like, uh, I don't love the Invincible for easy days. Um, but if you do, then I'm trying to think like, that's, shoe, that's a shoe that you can use probably for your recovery days as well. But if you are looking for a recovery day shoe, I would look at the Nimbus 25 and the more version three, because that's going to be like really, really soft and squishy. Um, for your workouts and long runs, if you're using the Endorphin Pro 3, what are you racing in? That's what I would want to know. Um, I'm guessing if you like the invincible, you're probably going to want to go with a Nike option again for your racing shoes to have that similar zoom X foam. Um, but I do think that like an audios pro three could work out really nice for you as well. Um, cause that's going to be a little bit kind of like a little bit firmer, um, a little bit more pingy, you know, a little bit more bounce than the endorphin pro three would give you. So I feel like that one could work for you if you're not going to go with the Nike option. Hmm. And Ray Martin says, thoughts on inserts? Do they hurt the experience of a running shoe? I have very low archers and put inserts under the sole to prevent plantar fasciitis. Um, I stay away from inserts. I've tried them before. Um, but like, I do think that they disrupt uh, the feeling of a running shoe a lot. So for someone that reviews running shoes, I don't like to have them in there. There were some shoes that I had problems with that like if I replaced the, you know, the factory insole with an aftermarket one, sometimes it made like a shoe that I couldn't run in, made it runnable, but it's not something that I would normally do a lot. Uh, from a plantar fasciitis perspective, if it prevents the PF for you, then I would say, you know, go for it. Um, there might, I, and I would say like, if there's someone, a reviewer out there who also has plantar fasciitis, or also has like a similar type of insole that they put in a lot of shoe. I don't know of any, but if you guys do know, let me know. Cause I would love to be able to talk to that person. Um, but that could be a good way to, to kind of like figure out what shoes work best for you and what shoes work best for insoles. So that's kind of like something I would recommend. Cause like what I recommend may not always translate well for you. But the other thing that I would think of is, and guys, I think I've been telling you guys about this. I think that I'm starting to develop some, or I think I've always kind of, not always, but I think I've been dealing with kind of a low grade plantar fasciitis for a long time in my left foot. Um, and that not even in my foot, not in the arch. It's just like the ball of the ankle. Um, sometimes if I've been sitting for a long time, when I stand up again, especially if I sit in a, like a high top, like a bar stool and then stand up, then my, it'll feel like um, I've got a giant bruise on my heel. I think that's plantar fasciitis. Um, what I'm worried about right now is not so much like, should I get an insert to make it better? Is what kind of, what am I not doing that's putting pressure on, on that 
um, particular part of my anatomy? And how do I relieve, you know, how do I strengthen the other areas that will relieve the source of the problems and not just ameliorate the symptoms? So that's kind of like what I would push you to, Ray, is for now, run with the insoles, but in the interim, work on, you know, strengthening whatever you need to strengthen. And I'm still trying to figure that out too. Strengthening whatever you need to strengthen. So that way the plantar fasciitis isn't an issue. And then you can experience the shoes kind of straight up without the use of an aid, like a, like an arch insole. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. Um, Eric says, I can't stand high top tables. Uh, stool at a bar. Okay. But high top chairs just don't agree with me. It, do you have plantar fasciitis too, Eric? Is that why? <laughs> um, and Sean says, you know, exactly. Kofuzi, you got to do the preventative medicine. So that's kind of like how I, how I think about it. Um, time to run says this is helpful says i think morgan dallas has put out a video on the run experience about insoles okay i would check yeah let's check that out um frank says ed but occasionally swaps out the sock liner i think he had a review on one insert a couple of years ago yeah i think ed just really likes to tinker a lot too and so i think that's where a lot of that comes from but yeah i think he's played around with a lot of insoles before sometimes he'll switch them he'll be like ed, ed, i'm just like I don't know how useful this information could be to other people, but I do think it's just kind of interesting information. He'll be like, I didn't like this shoe, but when I put in the insole from a Hoka Bondi, then it was great. And I'm like, okay, what do I do with that information? I don't know, but it's, it's, a, it's a nice piece of trivia. <laughs> Amadita Dicochea says, the Graston technique for plantar fasciitis, scrape out that scar tissue. It's the only thing that worked for me. Yeah, I mean, I think that I've been I've been treating it a lot like when I had a little bit of um, patellar tendonitis. Um, I use stimulation and massage to um, get get blood flow into the area um, and um, stimulate, uh, I guess, collagen genesis um, to help the plantar fascia kind of heal itself. Um, and so that's kind of step one. But the other step is like, all right, what's what's the deficiency that's causing this scar tissue to develop in the first place. I'm really hoping the answer isn't like get rid of all of your non foot shaped shoes. I, I, I'm hoping there's some sort of answer. <laughs> Shannon says, Cole, you got to walk in zero drops all day. It lengthens the plantar. I'm usually barefoot most of the day. So that's, um, I, I under, I've heard that recommendation before. I've been thinking about it. You know what? Are, are Crocs zero drop? Can I just walk in Crocs all day? Um, I'm not sure if that helps. Here's the other thing that I've been doing. Whenever I'm down here, I got this thing from, um, roll recovery. It's the, um, R3. Um, I just kind of roll my foot around it. And then these ends right here, um, I'll put like the butt of my foot, like on it and butt my foot, butt of my foot. That seems weird. The ball of the heel right on it. And here are like the toes. Here's the back of the foot. And this is where it's really like feels like it's a bruise, but it's not a bruise, but it feels like it. And so I'll just kind of like, as I'm sitting here a lot of times, if you see me fidgeting, it's because I got this thing underneath the table and I'm working my foot. So that's what I've been doing. Um, Steven C1984 says, now you're back. Oh, we're hurt right now. Says now that you're doing back doing speed work, are you noticing the benefits of the gym? Um, not yet, because right now I'm just like out of um, like speed work shape. You know what I mean? I've been running easy for the last like month and a half. Nothing but like six weeks of just easy running or however long it's been since Boston. So right now, whenever I run hard, it's just like, ugh, I just feel like I'm dying. Um, but um, I don't know. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I'll notice the benefits of it later um, when I'm like, at week like seven week eight into a marathon block but for now i mean it doesn't seem to be like oh i'm so much more tired and i feel like i can't run because of the weights so i don't know if maybe i just need to add more weights um so i do feel that way or if it's just that way like maybe like my body's responding well enough to it and maybe that's what it is maybe once you know if i taper from the weights as i get closer to a race day then boom then i'll feel it i don't know i'm not sure I'm kind of liking the gym and it doesn't seem to be interfering too much with the other running. So I feel like those are good. Two good things. 
Mm, Eric says about him hating high tops. He doesn't have plantar fasciitis. It just throws his back off when he sits at a high top for some reason. It's weird. And yeah, uh, he's with Shannon for using zero drops for day-to-day walking. Beefcake the feet. I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about getting a pair of, um, uh, what is it? They're like white shoes. Not the ultra solstice, but they're one. Are they zero XERO? Those ones? Uh, they're super floppy too. I don't know. I've been thinking about maybe I'd pick up one of those. Um, 308 bar says, I don't have plantar fasciitis, but I do need higher arch support due to navicular bone support due to some overpronation in the right foot. That sounds very specific. Um, he's a super feet adapt max insole. Oh, I'm glad that there's something that works for you. Higher arch support due to navicular bone. Hmm. And Terrence points out, Morgan Dallas is her, is her Strava name, but she's actually Morgan Hawkins. I think Dallas is her maiden name then. Yeah, she's, Terrence says, well, she's married, so I think it's hyphenated. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ray Martin says, thanks. Uh, answering the question earlier about the insoles. He says, he's rotating the SC trainers and the Novelast 3s. And I feel like the insoles are taking some of the edge off of the bounce of the shoe. Yeah, I think so. Think of it like um, an extreme version of kind of like the dampening effect that an insole might have on a shoe. I would say it would be like the speedboard in on running shoes. So like I, I've been since the first time I ever tried an on running shoe, I was like, what happens if we get rid of the speedboard? Maybe I would actually like <laughs> like it, uh, or maybe I would like it more, um, just because like it's like a very stiff piece of material that dampens whatever effect that the foam would have had um, without giving you back anything, you know. And so that's why I think that some of the stiffer inserts can can because there's inserts for everything. There's super squishy inserts that are going to do different things than like uh, motion control in inserts, you know. So. I think it also could depend, but I think ultimately, yeah, it will interfere a little bit in what you're feeling like, you know, and to, to go even further, you know, a lot of times like some shoes, the strobel board, the part that connects like the upper to the midsole, um, is very thick, thicker than others. Um, like oh, what shoe was I looking at? that had a thick strobel board craft Nordlight ultra. It's off camera, but it's a, it's it, you can kind of see it. it's all the way in the corner. That one it has a very thick strobel board, and I keep thinking like if they got rid of that, if they could get rid of that, you'd have a much more comfy experience in that shoe. And so like I don't know why they don't. So, but and I run a beer, and then we'll get to the package after this. I run a beer. What's going on? It says I've been dealing with some mild plantar fasciitis. I like how you guys are abbreviating it to PF, but I've been saying it out the whole way. Uh, so mild plantar fasciitis, and it seems directly correlated to how tight my calves and Achilles are. I've been trying to focus on arch strengthening while simultaneously stretching the calf and ankle. Yeah, so I'm not a physical therapist, <laughs> clearly, um, but I think that mine is due to um, my left ankle has been very tight. Uh, and it has been ever since last summer when I ran on that 200 meter outdoor track I was telling you about. Um, ever since then, it just looks constantly swollen. Um, it's bigger than my right ankle. Um, and um, if I try to really bend the ankle a lot, it becomes uncomfortable. So I feel like there's a little bit of restricted motion that's happening. And I think that's probably what's causing the undue strain on the plantar fascia. That's my that's my hypothesis. So like um, my current plan of attack is in addition to like massaging using this R3 roll recovery tool, is to um, work on um, that ankle mobility again, which it's kind of like leg day. It's a thing that I've been work wanting to work. I've been trying to work on it all last year, and I didn't. So hopefully, I'll be able to get to it soon. Leona says, Mike, thanks for changing things up. Enjoy both the Kabuzi Run Club interviews with Emma Bates and Sydney Gidabade. Miss your run motivation vids, though. You know, thank you for number one. Um, I'm glad you guys are liking that. Uh, because, you know, I've talked to you guys about it. I don't 
love, I feel like I get a lot of, um, it's very hard for me from a mental health perspective when I try to interview pros. Not, and the pros have nothing to do with it, but I feel like there's a lot of competition. You know, there's a lot of other podcasters in the space. And this is, that's what they, they're like podcasters first. And they're trying to do interviews and they're very good at it. They've been doing it years longer than I have. And they have their own kind of like style and their routines that they do. Um, and so like, it's, I struggle to figure out like how to differentiate myself. And then, you know, not all the pros who have interesting results have interesting stories to tell. So um, that also becomes difficult and their schedules are much less flexible than like other people who are live on the internet like me, you know? So it's been hard, but I'm like, but there are some people that have interesting stories that I do want to talk to, but where do I put that, you know, and how often do I do that? So I don't, I'm figuring it all out, but you know, I think that there always has to be a little bit of uh, space reserved for experimentation on YouTube. So I'm glad that you guys are liking it. And about the run motivation videos, I was, someone else mentioned that to me in a comment today or yesterday. I just, I just saw it and then I was thinking about it on my run today. And I'm like, you know, the run motivation videos, I don't know. Does that now just become an Instagram reel? You know, is that some, is that what it becomes now? Or does that still stay as his own standalone YouTube video? Cause they're like three minutes long, two minutes long. So it doesn't seem like it. Maybe I just condense it a little bit and I adjust the pros, P R O S E, to be 60 seconds long, which is what a reel requires. I don't know. The difficult part is that, like, yeah, YouTube Shorts is so weird when you add music to it. So, like, that makes me a little bit less inclined. But if I'm going to go through the trouble of using, make an Instagram reel, then I'll probably use. Um, music that I have rights to, so it will be less of an issue. So it's some of the, there's just, it's just a different landscape somehow on the internet that makes it harder, but maybe it's something to, to bring back. Cause I was thinking about it like, mm, it's almost time for people to start their summer training plans for their fall marathons. You know, maybe we need to get back into another, um, what is it called? Run motivation video. All right. Um, three right bar has one more question before we get to the package and I just realized that I left my knife over there but I think it's this plastic bag I think I'm about to get it all right three right bar says Co your size nine how much space do you have for your large toe to the end of the toe box thumb width half a thumb right at the end I'm a size nine air quotes size nine two so I try to gauge for a reference for true to size from your reviews um you know it 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 can vary um, for what feels like fits and cause like what feel like fits isn't just about like the room at the, at the front of the shoe. So for this shoe, I think I had about a thumb width, um, this way, um, uh, of space. Um, and Adidas shoes tend to run a little bit long for people, but another factor that goes into true to size is whether it fits uh, across the, um, pads at the foot. So across like this way. Um, is another thing that goes for, for true to size in my mind. And then also this way, the volume of the toe box, right? So if some shoes, it's very flat down here and it feels like the shoe is sitting on top of your toes, even though your toes are not hitting the front of the shoe, if the top of the material is hitting your big toe, it feels just as uncomfortable. So there's a couple of things that go through it, but like, a, you know, I don't like the phrase rule of thumb, but it's about a thumb, a little bit less than the width of my thumb. Um, if it were less than that, I'd be like, Ooh, I don't, I don't know about this one. I'll go for a run and then try, but I don't, I don't know. But for me, like if a shoe feels too tight, it kind of feels like I'm, you ever have a, a flip flop that your feet got too big for, and you feel like your toes are over the edge of it. You'll kind of start to feel that way. That's how I know it's too small. It's not a, I don't ever put my, I don't ever like, I don't feel it. I don't wear, I, I don't feel like a dad feels like a kid's feet. If there's enough space, I do that too to my kids, but like, I don't feel it like that. I feel like, does it feel like I could do a little bit of this, stretch my toes out a little bit, or does it feel like my feet are uh, wanting to go over the edge of the, of the flip flop kind of thing? That's, then it's too small. If it's too big, it'll just make it feel kind of like I'm running in, um, running in a flipper. And like, even I could have a nice foam and he might even have carbon fiber plates, but it feels kind of flat. 
Um, and that's because it's just too big and your foot isn't like hitting the right this kind of crumple zones of the shoe. That's how I kind of feel about it. Sean says, oh, yeah, sometimes the arch doesn't line up right for me. And I go by that more than thumbs width. That is also, I think, primary thing that I don't like about sizing up. The arch hits my foot in the wrong spot. You know? Mm. All right. You guys are having a lot of fun with the words box and package at this point. So let's let's get to today's mail. <laughs> this is from Path Projects. I think I know what this is, but uh, I'm actually not sure. And hopefully I can open this up without having to get up and get the knife that I left somewhere else in this room. I got it. Here we go. I got a couple of things in there. I got some paperwork. And they sent me four things. Um, I think they sent me the same two things in both olive and in black. Let's look at it in olive because I feel like as much as I prefer the black stuff, um, it'll be easier to kind of see what we're working with. Uh, first is going to be the new, um, I think they're called Air Dot shirts from Path. This olive color makes it definitely feel like it's part of like a military uniform. Because it's just like a green t-shirt. But it's got a path logo down here in the corner. Like most path stuff, it's not like in your face what brand it is, uh, which is one of my favorite things about paths because then you can kind of wear it with everything. And it's that air dot mesh. So you can kind of see through it already. Um, a very lightweight, almost delicate material. Um, and it kind of is like a... These aren't holes because there's still material in these spaces, but the spaces of this mesh is a very thin material. Um, Floris tells me that they had this material out, I think a year or two ago uh, in a tank. And uh, this time they've shortened all the shirts by two inches. Cause if this gets wet, it gets, it stretches out quite a bit and it just kind of feels like it hangs on you a little bit heavy. Um, so hopefully that will be resolved with this. Um. Yeah, the other thing is, um, which I find a little bit a little bit of a bummer, but I understand because of this material. Um, I think on the website it says like you shouldn't wear a pack with this on because it like the rubbing of the shoulder straps could really um damage this material. So it's pretty delicate, but I think it'll be good for like summer wear, like when you just want to be able to have like a shirt on all day. Maybe you'll go for a hike or a run, but you might not necessarily get a chance to change. I feel like this is. This will work. Um, time to run says that path, the olive path tea looks legit. And Eric says, nice. Like that it's just olive green and not camo. Yeah, I just, does path make anything camo? I don't think path has made anything camo. I don't think that they need to. It has that kind of aesthetic already without being over the top on camo, you know? So, here. It's nice. All right, let's get to the next one. Mm, also in this olive color. But this one is the tank. So, yeah. Shorter than last year's by two inches or so, Flores told me. Yeah, these will be nice. Although, like, these will be nice now. This entire week. So my nephew was here. And uh, we were like, oh, you should come over. There's a lake. We can rent like a little rowboat. We can rent stand-up paddle boards. We can have a little picnic uh, on the beach and all this stuff. Um, and it was cold and rainy like the entire time he was here. Um, so I keep saying like, oh, I can't wait for all this like summertime stuff so I could be outside all day by the water, you know, but it's just been cold and rainy. But it was good. I felt very much like a Midwestern cliche because like, Every time any adult in this house over the last couple of days would look out the windows and it was raining, we'd be like, yeah, but we really needed this rain. Because it hadn't rained in like three weeks straight. All the grass was super crispy and brown and yellow. Um, and so we really needed the rain. But like, um, it's okay when my in-laws say it because they were actually farmers. Uh, they grew up on farms. Their parents were farmers, you know. Um, my mother-in-law loves to tell the story of how like on her wedding day, she was, uh, shoveling out, um, some of the, the pig living quarters areas. 
I forget. There's a technical term for that. I forget what it's called. But like, so she, she was a farmer. My father-in-law was a farmer. Uh, my brother-in-law has gotten back into farming again. Um, so there's farming in the family. But like, it's funny when in the Midwest, everyone, if it rains, everyone's like, oh, we need, we sure did need it. <laughs> I, de I definitely non-ironically said it like a bunch of times because I was like, oh, this would be good for my water bill. Now I have to water the grass. <laughs> Uh, see, Tampa wants to know are tornadoes a problem there? Yes, that they are. The nice thing was earlier when we lived in Chicago, like I feel like the um, whatever like the ambient disruption that a city causes prevents tornadoes from really forming in a major metropolitan area, and so that's how like we kept our kids from like freaking out about tornadoes. Um, but when we lived in Iowa for a little bit during the pandemic, um, there was some very strong windstorms and my kids were super freaked out i think rightfully so but yeah yeah uh, so yeah tornadoes uh can be a problem here uh nicholas holland wants to know is that a triple white primex strong i see in the top right corner uh yeah it is that's this one yeah i wore this one for boston it got a little bit heavy in the rain uh, and in those later miles but it is it's just gorgeous this shoe has been worn once just to Boston, and that's it. I'm, I'm, I might, I might bust it out some other time, but yeah, that was a fun one. It's a fun one to run in. Richard Willison says California is laughing at your three weeks straight of no rain. That's true, but it's a little bit different here than there. It's not a contest. All right. Um, Let's go. Let me just show you guys the, the other ones. It's the same shirts, but um, you know, I don't. Flores asked me which ones I wanted. I said, "Can I try the tank and the shirt in olive?" And he's like, "I'll send to you an olive and black." And I was like, "Well, I'm not going to argue with that." This looks really nice. Actually, I really, I'm glad he sent this one. This is this. It looks great in black. It's going to be, I think it's going to be very, it's just very soft, very, very soft material. I like it. I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I still don't know if I'm going to do like a hard workout, like a session where I'm gonna, I know I'm going to get like super drenched in it because it feels like it might hold on to water a little bit long, but there's only one way to really find out. So we'll do some testing. And here's the black tank. I think it looks great. Nice. All right. Mm. That's it for the package today. Uh, Andrew Scott wants to know how, how these are still white. Uh, you know, what's funny is so I had these and uh, it had it was like wet. It was like kind of muddy everywhere the morning of Boston. And, um, you know, in the athlete's village, you walk around in this grassy field. And if it's wet, you get muddy. And like Megan Murray was like, oh, no, you ruined your all whites. And I'm like. It's okay. It's a running shoe. It's going to get dirty. Um, but on the inside, I was like, eh, I would have liked if they stayed white. But I was like, but if they come out like trash, that would also kind of be pretty cool as well. Um, but at the end of the race, it rained a lot. And so um, the roads were wet and that kind of just like washed everything away. So that's how they're still all white. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Elliot Ender says, do you feel like the path tops run true to size? I haven't tried anything yet. Um, I don't know about these air dot mesh shirts. Is it air mesh or air dot? I think it's air dot mesh. Um, they were a little bit big last year, but everything else from path uh, runs true to size for me. I wear medium and everything for tops and bottoms and I've, it works out just perfect. So I really um, think that they got the sizing nailed down. And I think someone was mentioning, hopefully they'll finally make some women's clothes. They do not make women's clothes. Um, I've talked to Flores about that. It's, they say it's just a lot harder because even if a medium fits like a lot of women, there still would be a large percent of women that it won't fit because cuts have to be much more specific and there's much more variability um, for what kind of fits in the women's space. So he says it's a lot harder for them. So it's just easier for them to stay on the men's side. 
So, but I feel like, you know, I've been wanting Wazelle to make like men's clothes for a long time too. I feel like, you know, there's Wazelle on one side and I guess Path on the other. There's not exactly the same, but you know. Uh, Andrew Scott wants to know what chased me the least. Um, you know, I'm very lucky, knock on wood, that I don't really normally have much of a chafing problem. Um, so, um, yeah, I don't often get chafed by stuff. If I do, it's sometimes from like some half tights that I'll wear. Um, if I'm not wearing like the right underwear, you know, so I don't really have one that chased me the least and there's no one item or brand that chafes me the most either. So I don't really have an answer for you on that one. <clears throat> Calvin said, you should do a get ready with me live with the path stuff. <laughs> uh, live? Uh, okay. But then I have to leave at the end. That's the thing if, uh, if I do it live. <laughs> <sighs> that would make it hard. All right. Uh, yeah. Nelly Ender says, yeah, I've been wanting Wazel to do stuff for dudes. You know, I think that like, you know, I talked to Dave Spandorfer, one of the co-founders for Janji. Um, and uh, they merged with Wazel. And I don't remember, I, I specifically asked them this question. Is it like a merger? Is it an acquisition? How, did, how should we describe it? And he's like, I think he said merger. Um, so they merge and I, you know, what, like Johnji does make women's apparel too. So I was like, oh, well, then will Johnji start making basically like Wazel men's? And he's like, not really. The brands are still t very separate. Um, and uh, he was giving me some like internal data that they had that I don't know if I'm allowed to share the numbers, which is fine because I don't remember the numbers. But he was saying that a lot of people who are like devout Wazel fans have never heard of Johnji before. Um, so it's not like, um, even though John G also makes women's clothes, it shouldn't cannibalize Wazelle. So, um, yeah, I don't know what I was. Oh, but yeah, but I don't think that John G has become Wazelle dudes, but I don't know, maybe, maybe it can. Um, or at least maybe that could be like, they could like kind of like, you know, peek over at John G's homework for some men's cuts and figure out, not that they can't figure out how to do men's cuts on their own, but you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. John G's clothes fit. I'm wearing a John G shirt today. John G's clothes fit great. And um, so like maybe there could be some Wazelle stuff that way. Cause you know, I just want to be like, I like what they do. I want to support that mission. You know, uh, Shannon says Wazelle is pronounced Wazelle. Am I pronouncing it wrong? I don't think I'm pronouncing it wrong. It's not like Weasel. I think it's Wazelle. That's, I don't know. That's hopefully I'm saying it okay. Um, yeah. Uh, let's end with this one. Eric wants to know who is your next guest? Just curious. Uh, I think the next guest that I have scheduled is going to be Emily Heller. She's going to be coming on next week. Um, but that's a long time from now. I think it's not for, I think it's not till next Friday because she's, Cause she still has like a regular job and stuff. And so we have to work around her regular job. <laughs> um, Cause I wanted to have her on earlier. We're going to play name that shoe with Emily that I think would be really fun. Uh, I know I'm going to limit it to shoes that she's reviewed. If I, if I have them to photograph. Um, so we'll play that whether I reached out to a couple of the people to see if they could just come and hang out. If they want to play name that shoe, if it's, if it makes sense, we will. If it doesn't, then we don't necessarily have to. Or maybe we'll play a different trivia game. You know? So, yeah. That's... Emily's up next, but hopefully we can have another person in the interim before that. We'll just have to see who's around. You know? All right. That's going to be a good place to end it for today. Tomorrow, there'll be a video. I got it done a little faster than I thought, but I like to have a Friday release. So, tomorrow's video is going to be my leg day routine. The video that four or five of you will be really interested in it and the rest will be like, why is this guy making this? But hopefully it'll be at least entertaining. So that'll be tomorrow's video. And then we'll do uh, another live stream. Same time as today, 1 p.m. Central time. Hopefully I'll see you then. We'll get more packages. I have more packages. I don't have to get them. I have more packages. We'll unbox some more stuff. Hopefully I'll see you then. In the meantime, be safe out there, everybody. Thanks. Bye.